हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल साई एड यू फार्मा यू माइट हैव सीन आर वीडियो ऑन लाइपोजोम्स पार्ट वन इन विच वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डेफिनेशन एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस कंपोजिशन ऑफ लाइपोजोम्स दिस इज पार्ट टू इन विच वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन डिटेल अबाउट वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ लाइपोजोम्स एज इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैड सीन दैट Liposomes came from word lipos, which means fat, and soma means body. So these are vesicular drug delivery systems, and they are basically formed of phospholipids. So we will be seeing what are the various types of liposomes. So they can be classified on the basis of their size, on the basis of their structural parameters, and on the basis of their composition. hope you might have seen various videos on ndds in our playlist in this we have discussed the complete syllabus of b farm 7 sem ndds as well as the videos are very important for m farm students so what are the various types of liposomes first is based on their size we can classify them as unilamellar multilamellar and based on their structural parameters they are categorized into multilamellar liposomes then oligolamellar then unilamellar and multivesicular in unilamellar again it is on the basis of size small medium large and giant then liposomes can also be classified depending on their composition that is depending on their modifications so when there is no modification they are conventional liposomes then there can be ph sensitive liposomes cationic immuno liposomes long circulating liposomes and steel liposomes so all these types now we will be discussing one by one so on the basis of size if you see then when there is only one layer at a single bilayer of an amphiphilic lipid or a combination of such lipids then it is called a unilamellar liposome in this in the center there is aqueous core and then on the basis of size you can see here small medium large and giant and the size will be discussing then comes multilamellar uh, liposomes this one is multilamellar here you can see that the structure is like onion and it is made up of various unilamellar vesicles and it forms in the inside here you can see uh, there is also central core and then outside there are various layers so this you can see the size this is suv means small it is less than 100 nanometer the large one is between 100 to 1000 nanometer and for more than 1000 nanometer it is called giant unilamellar vesicle then multilamellar are generally more than 100 nanometers and in multivesicular in inside core also you will be seeing in this type of vesicles present and the size is more than 1 micrometer now we come to the types of liposomes we'll be discussing in detail on the basis of structural parameters here you can see if uh, there are more than 5 multiple lipid bilayers then it is multilamellar if there are 2 to 5 rings then it is oligolamellar and in multivesicular these are also known as vesosomes and in this vesicles are present inside the vesicles and in an aqueous solution they contain internal non concentrically arranged smaller vesicles made from naturally occurring or synthetic bilayer forming amphiphiles then comes unilamellar it consists of single lipid bilayer further divided into this as we have already seen giant large medium and small this is the structure this is small unilamellar this is large then this is multilamellar and here you can see inside vesicles are present so multilamellar as we saw it is consisting of multiple lipid bilayers they are relatively larger and very important point here is they are often used for encapsulating hydrophilic drugs hydrophilic means water soluble drugs and can you tell me where it will be incorporated yes it will be incorporated in the core where basically there is a hydrophilic portion for example liposomal amphotericin b which is in market it is called as ambisome 
it is an anti fungal medication encapsulator in multilamellar liposomes to reduce its toxicity while maintaining the efficacy and small unilamellar they are suitable for encapsulating both hydrophilic as well as lipophilic drugs an example is doxorubicin liposomes and its name is doxil they are used in the treatment of cancer why it is used because they help to reduce the side effects of doxorubicin which is very potent chemotherapeutic drug and this is large unilamellar vesicle and uh, here you can see that they are used for encapsulating larger molecules and are often employed in research settings here you can see that they are loaded with fluorescent dyes and are used in cellular and molecular biology research for studying membrane dynamics and cellular processes so this is variation of size then as i previously told multivesicular liposomes they are very important and they can encapsulate and deliver therapeutic agents like drugs proteins peptides and nucleic acid to specific target sites in the body why they are unique they are unique as compared to traditional because they contain multiple aqueous compartments and which are separated by lipid bilayers now we will be seeing various types of liposomes in which if we modify the structure then the purpose is altered or then we can change the application in conventional liposome there is no modification and they are used in pharmaceutical applications in general they are basically made up of natural or phospholipids for example spingomyelin egg phosphatidylcholine monosyalino gangliosyl these are some of the phospholipids which are used now comes ph sensitive liposomes obviously as the name says they are designed uh especially the design is inspired by viruses that merge with endosomal membranes and deliver their genetic material to the cytosol before reaching the lysosomes they are consisting of phosphatidyl ethanolamine and titrable stabilizing amphiphilic molecules which are stable under acidic conditions what happens is as they are unstable in acidic so they will release the drug they will rupt they will be getting ruptured and they will be releasing the drug in the acidic environment then cationic liposomes they are formed by mixing of cation lipids the complex form is due to the interaction between the positive head group of the lipid with negative phosphate group of dna so we'll be seeing um, in more in detail in further slides and similarly there is immune or immunoliposomes they contain monoclonal antibodies or their fragments with phospholipids in some cases you can see that antigens are reconstituted into liposome membrane or they might be inserted into the interior core of the liposome to increase the immune response then comes long circulating liposomes they are specially designed to extend the circulating time of liposomes in blood maximum circulation time is achieved by using polyethylene glycol which are covalently bound to the phospholipid and these long circulating liposomes are also called as steel liposomes so this is stimuli uh, sensitive liposome ph sensitive was example of stimuli sensitive here stimuli can be temperature ph enzyme light or any redox reaction you can see here that when any stimuli approaches then because of that the drug is released from these liposomes then similarly ph sensitive we have already seen that ph will be changing the important role for example in the acidic condition you can see here in the ph 5 to 6 the drug is released as i told that peg coated or pegylated liposomes they are called as steel liposomes they have a surface coating of polyethylene glycol polymer and this peg enhances the stability of the liposomes and because of that it prolongs their circulation time in the blood stream because the immune system could not recognize the pegylated liposomes and thereby the targeted drug delivery is achieved example is doxil it is a pegylated liposomal formulation of doxorubicin which is used in cancer here you can see that these are 
PG, this PG, and then with PG again, you can also add on aptamer antibody, then penetration enhancer, carbohydrate peptide dox. Dox is the drug which is present here inside. This is another example of steel liposome. Here you can see that only PEG is present in the outside. And here you can see along with the PG, there are various other constituents or ligands also. Then this is also very important one, cationic liposomes. And as you can see that they are spherical structure and they contain positively charged lipids. And this positive charge of lipids will allow cationic liposomes to form complex with DNA, mRNA, siRNA, which are negatively charged nucleic acids. And they bind by ionic interactions. Now, after interacting with nucleic acid, what will happen is the cationic liposome will form a cluster of aggregated vesicles. And these interactions will allow the cationic liposomes to condense and encapsulate various therapeutic and diagnostic agents in the aqueous compartment or in the lipid bilayer. So these complexes are also known as lipoplexes and because of this overall positive charge they interact with negative charged cell membranes more readily than the classic liposomes. So uh, they are better or they are uh, they have more applications as compared to traditional or conventional liposomes. Then cationic liposomes are increasingly being researched for use as a delivery vectors in gene therapy because of their capability to efficiently transfect cells. So where it, they are commonly used is in cancer drug delivery. So this is diagram for cationic liposomes. Then another category is immunoliposomes. They are modified with specific antibodies or ligands on their surface. And these ligands will facilitate targeted drug delivery to cells expressing the corresponding antigens. For example, immunoliposomes targeting HER2 receptors are used in the treatment of breast cancer. This is another example of immunoliposome. Here you can see that small compounds like contrast agents, radionuclides, they are combined. Then chemotherapeutic drugs like doxorubicin, vincristine, paclitaxel are used. Then nucleic acid like antisense, oligonucleotides, siRNA, ribosomes, DNA, they are used. Then peptides and proteins like cytokines, toxins, enzymes are used. So here you can see an encapsulated drug. It will be reaching to targeted drug delivery, especially for the treatment for you know, in, in the case of tumor cells, tumor vasculature and tumor stroma. So this was liposomes part 2 and uh, we have already seen liposomes part 1 with definition, advantages, disadvantages, composition and structure. And further, many more videos will be coming and in basically three more videos will be coming. One will be for applications, then methods of preparation and final one will be evaluation parameters. So in this way, hope we are trying to cover your syllabus of NDDS and this one is unit 4 of BFARM 7 semester. So, if you have any type of problem, then you can write us in the comment section and hope you might have subscribed our channel Sai Edu Pharma and also you might have uh, pressed the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever we upload any new video. Also, go and watch our motivational video in which we have uploaded various tricks and various motivational things to how you can clear, how you can pass or how you can be all clear in your exams. Stay connected with Sai and you Pharma. Thank you so much.